We are supporting the Mad Swimmer Charity Initiative in their endeavour to raise funds via their adventures. It's a bit of a mad idea. We decided to come and do the, um, the swim over the Neisner um, Oyster Festival and some of the guys and girls said why don't we also do the half marathon. So we ended up with quite a daunting task and uh, was thinking about it these last three k's. Uh, if we're not uh, maybe pushing the envelope too far. So we just finished 21.1 k's and we've got about 14 and a half kilometers of swim left in just under three hours. Uh, we're looking to catch the high tide going out, swimming from the red bridge, which we saw right to the heads. It's gonna be, it's still a long day ahead. Okay, we just finished the, the run. It wasn't too tricky. It was, we took it quite easy, did it under two hours. Um, and now we're quite excited for the swim. 25 mad swimmers, some solo, some swimming a relay, prepare for the water. 14 and a half kilometers from Red Bridge to the Neisner Heads. Well, as I was saying, it's, it's actually remarkable how much interest there has been in the swimming uh, from the point of view of a solo as well as a, a team events. Um, there are about 11 solo swimmers, I think, and um, we. Um, you know, I think the solo swimmers will find it particularly tough today because the conditions are not easy. There's quite a bit of chop on the water. We're hoping to get a favourable outgoing tide, but that's not guaranteed in, in the circumstances of a neap tide. And what we are going to find is that there's going to be quite a spread of uh, strengths. We've got some really good swimmers here today. We've got the likes of Gerrit Sandberg, uh, Emma Keeley, we've got um, Anthony Pierce, uh, Russ Gaynor, a couple of uh, really competent swimmers. We've also got a combination of people that are wearing wetsuits and others that are going naked. Obviously in a wetsuit there's an advantage. Um, you always get the, the buoyancy uh, which does help with your speed and also it's going to help for the warmth. Uh, the temperature of the water is around about 16 or 17 degrees. There are patches in the lagoon which are a lot colder than that so people need to be aware of that. Um, clearly uh, for us it's a, a fun event but also we're looking to raise money on the Man Swimmers brand for a charity uh, which we've chosen, a local uh, community charity, which we'll be supporting in terms of this event. So I'm going to be one of the solo swimmers and we're going to swim about 14 and a half k's from the Red Bridge here to the heads at the end. So we're looking at swimming approximately four k's, three and a half to four k's an hour or every 45 minutes. We'll stop every 45 minutes for a bit of a feed and a juice and then carry on until the end where we have a nice beer waiting for us. Just get on and do it. Don't let the distance or the event freak you out and just get in there and do it and have fun. It's very important. The Red Bridge, um, roughly 14.2 kilometers from the heads. Um, water is quite nippy, you can see with uh, all the wetsuits. Some of us have been conned into um, <laughs> Half wetsuits, uh, but um, there is there is actually going speedo. So um, yeah, the, everyone seems quite excited. Um, a lot of uh, uh, guys around that also did the run this morning. So um, they, uh, I think, they're a bit more apprehensive. But uh, everyone's quite excited. We had a good briefing from Terry and then the boat captain Skulk. So um, now we just got to get to the heads. The mad swimmers get their start. Wetsuit and costume swimmers relay and solo swimmers under the red bridge the water varying between 15 and 17 degrees don't forget most of these contestants have just completed a 21.1 kilometer road run the paddlers watch solo swimmer rob ambler get into stride Megan Harrington Johnson now. The tide is in the swimmer's favour, but it remains a daunting swim. Johan Teron on the paddle ski keeps an eye on Jean Craven. In 2009, Jean won a 100,000 rand wager to swim across the Strait of Gibraltar, a stretch of water between Africa and Europe. He felt bad taking the money, so he created Mad Swimmer as a vehicle to plough much needed funds into various South African charities. 
Mona van Eerden looks to be gliding effortlessly. That's Rob Ambler from Grahamstown, originally from Pretoria, swimming in this flipping freezing cold water and having a ball at the moment. Cool, Otherwise, it's been awesome. Great. Shattered. Thank you. Charlene de Souza and Adrian Otto complete a leg of their relay swim. <laughs> Terry Bantock. <laughs> Megan slows for an essential feed. It looks like the relay swimmers have caught on to a new way to enter the water. Well, some of them anyway. Anthony Pierce is the best place solo swimmer at this stage. He's wearing a speedo, cap and goggles only. Russell Gaynor, wearing a wetsuit, is just ahead of Anthony. He is maintaining a good pace and rhythm. Olympic backstroker Gerard Zandberg is actually just ahead of Pierce now, leading the solo swim. Emma Keeley, sporting the red cap, is staying with the lead group. She is contesting the full 14.5 kilometer as a solo wetsuit swimmer. Back to Johan Teron was Jean Craven in the water. Linda Main now. Elaine Sinden and Dean Jones get some sustenance on the support boat. Later this year, the Mad Swimmer Squad will do their annual main event on Mount Oyos de Salado in Chile, South America. At 6,400 meters above sea level, it is the highest lake in the world. They will fight two extremes, the altitude and the cold. Okay, so I just finished my first 45 minute leg and um, it was actually not as bad as what I thought it would be. And I had a great swimming partner, he's in another boat now, and uh, you could actually stand up quite a few times. Terry Bantock, just ahead of Adrian Otto. The water gets choppier as the race progresses. Terry looks comfortable, but some swimmers are now feeling the cold. Um, I think I, my, my core took, I made the mistake of taking my wetsuit off. I swam for about an hour without the wetsuit, and I think that my um, core temperature has dropped really, really low. I think I've got a little bit of hypothermia. No, not, not feeling great. Precaution is key here. The helpers assist Megan in warming up. Even with a wetsuit, this remains an extreme challenge. Rob and Elaine lend a hand, stabilizing Megan. The clouds get heavier and darker as the mad swimmers pass the luxury houses of Thesson Island. Relay swimmers Charlene de Souza and Nanette Landon negotiate the choppy swells. John Craven now in shallow water. The swimmers sense that the finish is now in sight. And whether you are a solo swimmer or a relay member, the end is a welcome sight. Gerard Zandberg rests in shallow water. The final leg for Dean Jones and Rob Ambler. The water is cold. Megan has recovered and welcomes a warm drink from the support boat. Terry Bantock behind the beacon. And Jeanette Michelides making slow but steady progress in her solo swim.
spectators and families start to gather close to the finish. It is more than two hours and 48 minutes since they started at Redbridge. Minky has joined her mother, Marissa Brits. Charlene D'Souza is in the foreground. We saw Lynette Lambden finish, as well as Carol Hampshire, Delhi Henry and Paula Wishart at the finish. Many of these swimmers are part of the local club Neisner Seahorses. Mona van Eerden finishes her 7.5 kilometers. Linda Main gets congratulated. It has been a long and cold swim, but one that has ended safe and without incident. Jean Craven rises on firm sand. Um, I must say, um, you know, 14 and a half k's after all the other swims didn't um, seem such a big of a deal, but uh, it was. Um, <coughs> water's like um, 16, 15. It was quite choppy. Um, and, you know, navigating your way through all these canals. No, it was a hot swim. And uh, hats off to, to all the guys. Huh? Um, yeah, some good swimmers uh, yeah, in uh, Nysna and the Western Cape. Uh, so, Marlies will have to uh, lift our game a bit. Terry Bantock, in true tradition, went out slow and ensured the safety of everyone before he completed his 14.5 kilometers. Last bit was uh, pretty cold, but uh, I'm glad to have finished the race and it was a good event overall. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, the, end, the end swimming with my mate was quite fun. Uh, we had a couple of shark stories to tell, uh, especially in the deep water at the end there. But yeah, otherwise, awesome, epic swim. Loved every second of it. Do it again next year for sure. The swim was, 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 was challenging from the start. Uh, the idea was to, to start gently and then maybe, you know, bunch up together and finish all together. But then there was a couple of guys who really went for it hard and, and uh, just the, the chilly conditions and especially the wind at the end, you know, made it quite, quite difficult. Uh, especially, I'm not, a, I'm not a distant swimmer, but uh, really happy to finish 15 kilometers in the, you know, in this, uh, this charity swim and hopefully John can manage and we can do it next year again. We look forward to the next Mad Swimmer Extreme Adventure. <laughs>